gang, I hope you're having a fantastic day today. First and foremost, as you saw in the intro, I first wanted to open up my Bronco packet, which actually came in the mail before I took delivery of the car. So I know it's embarrassing, but I finally opened it on video and what it included was this cool poster that shows the design process all the way from 2017 to the final product. They also included some other items like this card stock piece of paper, which has the Bronco emblem on the back and the old and the new Bronco on it, which is kind of a cool touch. It also included a thank you letter and kind of a sorry for taking so long and this cool window decal, which I may actually use, although I can really only put it on the four windows on the doors because the rest of my car is a soft top. So nonetheless, pretty nice touch. I know a lot of people have been getting them uh, or already received them since this is over a month ago, but some people who are still waiting for their cars are actually getting a hammock from Ford. So perhaps you have received one of those hammocks because you're still waiting for delivery of your vehicle. Since I took delivery, I unfortunately do not get a hammock. But anyways, today's video is not about that. I just figured I would open it on camera because it's been over a month and a half since I received it. Today's video, we're actually gonna be doing a little garage update because I realize there have been a lot of cars on and off the channel over the last couple months, including a Vanderhall Venice. And I wanted to give you an update on what cars I have because it's been a little bit of time since we've kind of talked one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm sure you guys are wondering, what are the plans for the channel? What are the plans for the garage? because some of you are worried that I'm getting rid of this Hellcat, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then I'll finish off this video talking about all of the cars I have owned in the past, which one has been my favorite, and which one is the one that I kind of forget about the most. So let's get to it and kick off today's video. All right, before we get talking about the updates on the channel, I first wanted to talk about the Hellcat. That's the elephant in the room, quite literally, because it takes up pretty much more than half the garage. Anyways, uh, what are the plans for this car? Why have there not been very many videos of this car recently? And I guess just general updates because I know some of you are worried that because I got the Bronco, I am getting rid of the Hellcat. And the answer to that is no, do not worry. I am not getting rid of the Hellcat because I have the Bronco. As a lot of you who have been following the channel for a while know that the Bronco was a replacement to my daily driver and this is not my daily driver vehicle. That being said, I really Really have not driven this car that much over the last, I don't know, couple months because most of my time has been focused on the Bronco. And I apologize for that for all of you Mopar fans, but the truth is, is the Bronco is a new car. A lot of people have a lot of questions about it and there's really just not that much content out there. So I have been focusing my time on getting as much Bronco content as I can out there so that I can provide as much information for all of my future followers. Excuse how dirty it is. I got caught in a rainstorm yesterday and it made this car filthy dirty. Although thankfully the ceramic coating is holding up perfectly well. So I'll just have to take it through the wash real quick and it's going to be shiny. But anyways, what are the plans for the Hellcat? Well, I don't have anything crazy planned. As a lot of you know, I don't plan on doing any performance modifications just because I do not want to avoid the warranty. That was part of the reason why I purchased a brand new Hellcat was I wanted to make sure everything was under warranty for as long as possible. But I do plan on doing some more aesthetic modifications and I will get to those. I just have to plan some time out and get those items purchased and start doing some more videos on that. But that will come in the future. Don't worry. This is one of the two cars on the channel and this is going to get a lot of attention. It just hasn't had as much attention over the last couple months. Overall, I've actually driven less than 5,000 miles in my almost one year of ownership of this car. And I'll talk about my one year update when it comes up in the middle of October. So stay tuned for that video. But overall, I've really enjoyed this car. I just haven't driven it as much as I would like because there just aren't as many opportunities to do so. But I will be creating some more Mopar content coming up here at the end of October where I'm actually going out to Phoenix to do the SRT experience that I'm very excited to do because I'm very curious about the limits of these Hellcats since you can't really test the limits when you're just driving in day-to-day -day traffic. The next vehicle I wanted to talk about is my fiance's Range Rover. Now you guys are very familiar with this car. It's been on the channel for about two and a half years ever since my fiance got in a car accident and her vehicle was totaled. So this was the car that replaced her Jeep Wrangler and it's been a great car. She's really enjoyed it a lot. Um, not really any updates on this. There's no modifications or anything like that, but 
there may be a replacement to this car coming in maybe the next six to eight months. So sometime in the beginning to middle of next year, there may be a replacement to this vehicle. She does like SUVs. She likes the luxury SUVs, although she does still love the Jeep Wrangler and kind of the ruggedness and all the capability that that vehicle had to offer. So kind of a wild card. I'm not really sure what vehicle is gonna be next, but stay tuned for that. That may be something that's coming in 2022. Now for the big updates, we're actually gonna have to go outside because there is a change on the channel. Now obviously, if you've been watching the channel for the last month and a half, there's pretty much all Bronco content. That's because my newest vehicle addition is the 2021 Ford Bronco. But one vehicle that is missing in this parking lot, you could say, is my 2018 Toyota RAV4. So since we have last talked about that vehicle, which has been on the channel for almost three years, that vehicle has been sold. So I actually sold it a couple weeks ago, um, and it's bittersweet because that car Car really provided me great opportunities to be able to keep some equity in my Challenger Scat Pack and my Hellcat so that I could do bigger things with it. I mean, if the Scat Pack didn't have as much equity as it did, I would not be able to go for the Hellcat. So I really thank the Toyota RAV4 for that. And even though it wasn't a super exciting vehicle on the channel, it was a great daily driver. In fact, a better daily driver than this one, although this one is probably a funner car to drive. So anyways, that's the biggest update. This is the third car, I guess you could say, on the channel. Uh, although the Fiance's is not my car, that's just a vehicle that happens to be in the garage every time I make a video. But uh, this is my second car and that's it. I do not have a Vanderhall Venice and I no longer have a Toyota RAV4. Now I also wanted to talk about my father's Toronado. Now if you guys remember the beginning of this year me and my brother gifted my father an Oldsmobile Toronado which was his dream car. I'll link that video up on the screen right now so you guys can check it out but that car is uh, still under his possession for sure. He's actually taken apart a lot of the parts of the vehicle and is actually waiting to get it painted because the paint job wasn't perfect perfect on the car when we gave it to him. So this was his opportunity to restore it pretty much to brand new. So right now it's kind of just waiting for him to find a good shop to be able to take it to, to do a really good paint job. He's going to keep it the same red color, which is the color he loved and the one that he had as a child on the toy that he owned. And as I'm sure you know, with all the pandemic shutdowns and everything, everything is backlogged. So it's very difficult to find a place that will actually work on it. And when they do, you're looking at six to 12 months down the line. So stay tuned for that. Once that project is done, I will show you the finished product product and you guys remember what it looked like when we first gifted it to him because I made a video about it. I will talk about that as soon as that's done but uh, that gives you an update on all of the vehicles and all of the changes on the channel over the last you know six to nine months. Now one thing I wanted to mention about the Bronco is I actually am getting a big car cover to go over the vehicle because there is no space in the garage as you could tell it's a two-car garage barely even a two-car garage so there's no space to fit this monster in so I did recently purchase a carport for it and I will do the installation. I I don't know if I'll make a video of it because it's not really that interesting, but uh, that should be coming in the next couple weeks. So before winter hits, this car should be protected. And I do plan on getting it ceramic coated before that happens, but uh, I have to do a few things on this car first. So now I wanted to quickly address some questions I've received on the Bronco. Uh, the most important being, what are you gonna change on the car? What are your modifications? And I haven't done anything yet, but I do have plans to do a mini build on the Bronco. Uh, first and foremost, that will include upgrading the wheel because I think these are just a little too small, a little too narrow. They don't poke out enough. They don't look aggressive enough. And I think this car looks a lot beefier and meaner with some bigger wheels. So that is going to be one of the first modifications that I'm going to do. I also have plans to do some stuff with decals on the hood, on the side of the car, make it a little bit more unique, a little different. I'm not going to do a full vinyl wrap, even though I consider that because I love the color of this car. But otherwise, I will add my touch to it by changing a little bit of the appearance on the outside. Going further, I do want to add some running boards or rock sliders if I can find them uh, because I think those are useful. Sometimes for people in my family it is harder for them to step into this car so having a running board or something there to step onto will make it a little bit easier and I think it adds to the look of the car and makes it look a little bit meaner and maybe a little bit more finished and that could protect some rock chips from flying up and hitting the paint over here from the wheels especially if I upgrade to beefier wheels. So those are just a few modifications. There's plenty of more stuff I might add onto this car. Uh, there's accessory panels 
panels here and up there. And so over time, I'm going to continue building this car because why else have a Bronco if you're not going to make some changes or modifications to it? So I definitely am going to do that, but it's going to take some time. So please be patient with me throughout this build process. It's not going to be an overnight thing. The other thing I wanted to discuss and the reason why this is not going to be an overnight build and why I actually took a brief two and a half week break from YouTube sometime near the end of August is because as a lot of you know, I have a fiance, I am engaged and I'm going to be married at the end of this month. So I am super stoked for that. It's a super exciting event. Uh, but with that, there's a lot of planning. If you guys have ever been in a wedding or know about it, it takes a lot of planning more than you probably would expect. And so because of that, any free time I have outside of work, which has been busier than usual, I spend planning for the wedding or getting stuff ready for the wedding. So forgive me for my small hiatus in August. And that may continue to happen at some points throughout this month until the wedding happens at the end of September. So bear with me, but that is also part of the reason why I have delayed doing some stuff on this car and on the Hellcat because I just haven't had the time or opportunity to do so. So now that you are updated on the entire Schwaze garage, we can jump into the Bronco and let's talk about what cars I have owned throughout my life and which ones have been my favorite and which ones maybe not so favorite. But first thing I wanna do is actually take off my doors for the very first time since I picked up this car because today is the absolute perfect weather and I can't think of a better vehicle to drive around in this amazing weather than a Bronco without its doors on. easy and as you can tell well we don't have a door here anymore I left the rear doors on because I just won't have time before the Sun comes down to go for a cruise come back and put the doors back on so we're just gonna take off the front two uh, surprisingly very easy to do so it just takes those two bolts it comes with all the tools with your little handy Bronco bag and uh, it just took like 30 seconds each side they weigh probably about 50 to 60 pounds so they're not super light but uh, that's probably better if you're getting into a car accident than having something that weighs like 10 pounds so let's jump inside the vehicle which will be really easy to do and let's talk about all of the cars I have had in my life all right setting off in the doorless Bronco <laughs> what do you think it's weird with no doors yeah, like it, it is all right so we're setting off in the doorless Bronco which is still a very weird experience uh, I've driven some UTVs before but uh, this is definitely a little bit different but very cool and exciting nonetheless you get to hear the turbo sound a lot better which sounds really nice on this 2.3 liter anyways let's talk about the cars i have owned in the past which ones have been my favorites uh which ones maybe not so favorite so my very first car ever was uh right before i turned 16 i actually got a 2004 honda crv so if you guys are not familiar that is kind of the the mommy car it, one of the earliest you could say crossovers that kind of took over the whole crossover craze but uh, that was a family car that uh, was kind of handed down to me and I was very grateful to have it because I just could not wait to get my butt into the driver's seat and start taking off in these cars and uh, it had a 2.4 liter VTEC which really didn't really mean anything I mean a lot of people were like oh wow your car has a VTEC but uh, it didn't really provide much in terms of horsepower or acceleration uh, but i love that car i mean i did uh, a lot of things to it including changing the wheels i uh, had someone paint the rear wheel cover similar to what i have here in the bronco it had a wheel mounted to the trunk lid um, i added interior like led lights and then i added a subwoofer uh, so a lot of fun things done to that car and i really enjoyed it it was a great first car to own uh, it even had like a picnic table in the trunk for some weird reason that nobody really knows but uh, i love that car and i owned it for i want to say a little bit over a year and or a little over two years and then i 
ended up selling that one and I actually purchased a brand new Mercedes C300 for Matic. And the channel actually started with that car being kind of the main vehicle on the channel. So many of you early subscribers will know that that was the very first car that you associate Schwaze with. And that was a fantastic car. I owned it for what I want to say was about five and a half years. And I didn't do too much in terms of modifications, but it was my daily driver. I drove it through uh, you know, all five and a half years to the university, through all the jobs I had during that time. So I put on quite a bit of miles on that vehicle. Over the five and a half years of ownership, I got it over, I want to say 77,000 miles. So I drove it quite a bit and I had a lot of experience with it. And I loved it. It was a great vehicle. I met my fiance with that car and uh, it had great acceleration. It was a three and a half liter V6, produced around 200 and I want to say 50 horsepower. Uh, and it did a great job because the car was very small, very light. So it provided for a lot of power for that amount of size. You got a zero to 60 in probably about six seconds on that vehicle. And it never, I would never consider it being a slouch. Um, after that, you know, around four and a half years into owning it, I really fell in love with uh, the Dodge Challenger. And uh, that's where really this channel took off was the Dodge Challenger Scat Pack that you guys remember in Destroyer Gray. So that was my vehicle after the Mercedes-Benz C300. It was a 2017 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. And uh, mind you, the C300 was a 2013. So I had that for uh, a little while, then I upgraded to a slightly used 2017 Scat Pack. And I owned that one for about two and a half years. And I loved the uh, living soul out of that car. That one was my favorite vehicle that I've ever owned, was probably the 2017 Scat Pack because it just drove so well, it was super quick. It was a head turner beyond any other car. Uh, the hood pins, the shaker hood, everybody wanted to turn and look at that vehicle. And even though the Hellcat gets a lot of attention, especially because it's being a Hellcat, uh, but something about that Scat Pack, it just looked way more retro. It looked like a true muscle car and I love that vehicle. And then part of the way through owning my Scat Pack, I picked up a 2018 Toyota RAV4 as my daily driver. The reason I did that was because my Mercedes was an all-wheel drive vehicle and the Scat Pack was not. And here living in this very mountainous area in Utah, as you can tell, you do need an all-wheel drive car for daily drivability, especially when you're driving long distances like I did. So I decided to go for a RAV4 to get a cheap daily driver that's reliable, has good resale value, and it was a fantastic decision because, like I mentioned earlier, if it were not for the Toyota RAV4, I would not have enough equity to be able to purchase a Hellcat. So I'm very grateful that I was able to get a second uh, vehicle or a daily driver, and I would recommend it for anybody who is in a similar situation. It definitely pays for itself because what you pay for the monthly payment you save in the equity that you have for your primary vehicle uh, so i love that car a lot it was my daily driver for almost three years and then in october of 2020 i ended up getting my dodge challenger hellcat and i sold my scat pack about two months later in december of 2020 and then as of July, I picked up this 2021 Ford Bronco. So I have owned a Honda CRV, a Mercedes C300, Dodge Challenger Scat Pack, a Toyota RAV4, a Dodge Challenger Hellcat, and now a Ford Bronco. So this is the sixth vehicle I have ever owned. And uh, well, now let's talk about the vehicles I've loved the most. And as I may have alluded to earlier, the number one spot I would say is the Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. I don't know why exactly that car has the number one place in my heart, but I love the way it looked, the way it sounded, the way it drove, uh, and it was just like the perfect price point where I wasn't too worried about getting a scratch or getting it nicked. Uh, and at the same time, I still was super proud of having that car. The Hellcat to me is a close second, but the reason it's second is because at the price point that it's at, I almost don't want to drive it as often because I'm worried about it getting damaged or uh, you know scratching it or scuffing it or something like that or getting broken into and so I tend to avoid driving the Hellcat because I worry too much about it versus the Scat Pack at the lower price point I didn't worry as much because well it's a cheaper car so that was my number one spot 
Uh, in terms of least favorite, that's gonna be hard to say, but I gotta say it's probably my Toyota RAV4. And uh, even though I am super glad I purchased that vehicle and I wouldn't have it any other way, I didn't gain an emotional attachment to that vehicle as much as I have with some of my other cars because I didn't really do that much to it. I mean, when I owned it, I had a Dodge Challenger Scat Pack that I focused all of my attention on. And so it didn't really get all of my love. It's, it's kind of like picking between your children. It's hard to do so, but when I had my Scat Pack and then my Hellcat that took all of my attention, I didn't pay as much attention to the RAV4, so I didn't get as much of an emotional attachment to it. Uh, the Honda was a weaker car. It was a lot less features, but I love that car so much because it was my first car. It was the only car I had at the time, and so I put a lot of love into that vehicle. And the same thing happened with my Mercedes-Benz, but I think the Toyota being my daily driver, I just didn't get as emotionally attached to it. And for that reason, I would say that's probably my least favorite, even though I am super glad I purchased that car over all of its other competitors, which included potentially buying a Subaru Impreza hatchback. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I did. That was a blast driving around without the doors on. I've never done that in my life, so that's pretty cool. Definitely gonna do that more often. If this is your first time checking out the channel, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. That supports me a lot in my growth. And find me on Instagram and TikTok at Schwazy underscore. Until next time, boys and girls, Stay schwazy, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.